And finally, members of the United Auto Workers will be at work at Chrysler this morning after a tentative agreement was reached just before a midnight strike deadline. Terms of the agreement will not be released until a Friday vote by members. Uh, that union, guys, 40,000 strong. And that's all the details I'm going to give you because you got Bob Nardelli sitting here. And there's yeah, exactly. nothing I can say about this story. <laughs> you got right, it exactly. all. Bob, I mean, Bob, you, you dealt with United Auto Workers so much when you yeah. ran Chrysler. I mean, tell us about what goes on here behind the scenes. I know they did a deal in the 11th hour last night. Yes. We had a pretty good month for the auto sector last month, very, right? Very good month. Very good. And, but this could just throw a wrench in everything. Yeah, well, it's interesting. First of all, you know, when Ford settled their agreement on their truck plant, you know, Sergio had no choice but to uh, do the same thing. Again, I don't know the details of what they agreed to last night, but I was pretty confident they were going to have to come to an agreement. If you think about the Sterling truck plant, it is one of the fastest growing, highest margin products that he's got in his product line. He cannot afford, you know, to have a strike there and get disruption as he's competing. It's, it's one of the uh, highest percent growth products he's had, number one. Number two, I, I think overall, if you look at what uh, Dennis Williams and, you know, the UAW negotiated, they clawed back a lot of what they lost. You know, they got a $3,000 bonus. Uh, they got uh, improvements in starting wages. Now, Chrysler didn't agree to put a cap on theirs as opposed to the other guys. So that was one of the points of contention that might have gotten resolved last night. But, you know, I think, I think they, they got a lot back in this deal. The auto business is, as we've talked, Maria, many times, it's one of the bright stars in our economic recovery, getting back to about 17 million units on an average basis for the year. It's really been a bright spot. Gas prices down, so we're seeing bigger SUVs, trucks, better margin, higher profitability, and so Chrysler's performance is really subsidizing Fiat's lack of performance. Yeah, I mean, I guess around the 2008 crisis, the, the UAW says that they gave up some real important, they gave in to some real important concessions because yes. they recognized things were so troubled yes. as they were. Now they want that one concession back, whereas, you know, newer people, younger workers make less than the more senior guys. Yes. We don't know if they actually got that concession, but that was one of the sticking points, the fight over the last week. Yeah, so let me just say that uh, when I was working with Ron Gettelfinger, who was the president of UAW at that time, uh, he stood tall and recognized the crisis that the auto industry was in. So there was a lot of concessions. First of all, the, the, the two-tier waste system, which is one of the big points right now, that uh, starting workers are paid less than, you know, the legacy workers. Exactly. So, right. so they got that, you know, they, they've improved on that. They gave the people that gave that concession two bumps, two bonus bumps, and two 3% wages during the term of the contract. So they are coming back to get some of those wages. And, you know, to some degree, that's, that's good. It's healthy. But we've got to be careful. You know, success breeds complacency. And we got to make sure we don't end up right back where we were again, Maria. Exactly, which is why these these negotiations are so important. Critical. We, we, we finally get some traction, and yeah, you're right. It's one of the few growth spots or, or, or positive areas in the economy. Yes. We'll say we're going to talk more about this, Cheryl. Yeah. Thank you very you much.